you. Also you. As you notice, Reverend Moses is not here. He, he and the First Lady had a family emergency. The First Lady's uh, father. So they had to make an emergency trip yesterday to Spartanburg. But we send our prayers and our well wishes to the family. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Let us take this moment to silently thank the Lord for what he's done and for who he is in our lives. Israelite, 
and whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things from trees, from these. And he said to him, verily, truly, I tell you, you will, be, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Thus ends the reading. Thank you, Father God, for your holy words. Let the church say amen. 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 Wonderful Counselor, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Father, we thank you now this morning. Father, we were able to wake up and see the sunrise this morning. Just for that, we say thank you, Lord. Because someone took their last breath last night. Someone is on a ventilator this morning, fighting for their life, Lord. But here we are. Willingly here in your house of worship. Lord, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we realize things could have been different, but we are here still to worship you, to give you praise because you deserve it, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Father, those that are experiencing a tough time right now, a loss, that are really going through this virus and are generally sick, Lord. Father, we ask that you spread your loving arms around them, that you give them the healing that they need, because, Lord, we know that you are the healer, and you are the great physician, Lord. So, God, we give you praise for healing right now. We give you praise for restoration right now, healing in our mind, healing in our body, and every aspect of life that we need, Lord, we give you praise right now, because, Lord, we know that you are able that you can do exceedingly and above all that we ask. God, we thank you right now. But Lord, we are here still on this earth, Lord, and sometimes we don't get it right, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. We make mistakes. 
You said things, you've done things. But Lord, it wasn't of you. But Lord, we are of you because we are your children. Father, would you forgive us right now? Father, clean our hearts, clean our minds so that we can better serve your people, so that we can serve our family, our neighbors that need to hear a word from you right now. Oh God, we say thank you. Just being the awesome God that you are. Father, you've heard the prayers. You know the hearts that are aching this morning. You know your children that are wounded physically, spiritually. Father, would you be that peace that we need right now? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah. If we can get to know you more, hallelujah. You are a wonderful God, a great God. Hallelujah. Father, your word that's come before us today. Lord, let it, let it not be of me, but let it be of you. That someone gets to know you today closer. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus. And for his sake, let every heart say amen. 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 amen.
Lord, your word, let it come forth, let it rain down on someone that needs to hear it, Lord. Let it be of nourishment to our souls, that your word is nourishment to our minds right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Sometimes you got to let the Lord take the wheel. Sometimes when he gives you something, just let him, let him have his way. Amen. If you have, if you have your Bibles this morning, Luke 10, 38 and 42. Luke 10, 38 and 42. And it reads, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman called named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary had chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. In this particular scripture, sounds familiar, we've spoken about it a time before. But I wanted to take a minute just to illustrate a couple points here. The first point, don't become distracted. Yes. In life, we become so preoccupied with so many things that it can literally make our heads spin. We try to be 10 different people in 10 different places and doing 10 different things, and it simply doesn't work. The second point is simply this, keep your eyes on Christ. When you keep your eyes on him, you'll find that things that were out of order will soon line up. That it will still work out for your good. In the scripture, Jesus went to Bethany. Martha demonstrates hospitality by welcoming Jesus into her home. When she, uh, she shares with her sister Mary, she then busies herself with the task of serving their guests. Although we are not told precisely what those tasks are, a good guess is that she began preparing a meal. Meanwhile, her sister Mary sits at Jesus' feet, listening to his words. Rather than assuming the role expected of a woman in her culture, she takes her place at the feet of Jesus. She assumes the posture of a student learning at the feet of a rabbi, a role traditionally reserved for men. Many who read or hear this story may, may cheer for Mary in her inversion of traditional rules. Many may also empathize with Martha's resentment of her sister for leaving her to do all the work. Jesus' response to Martha seems less than empathetic, chiding her for her distraction and worry and praising Mary. The problem with Martha is not that she is busy serving and providing Hospitality. Certainly, Jesus commands commends this kind of service to the neighbor many times, notably in the parable of the Good Samaritan. The problem with Martha is not her serving, but rather she, that she is worried and distracted. The word translated distracted, Latin in origin, has the connotation of being pulled or dragged in different directions. Martha's distraction and worry leave no room for the most important aspect of hospitality, attention to the guest in your home. In fact, she breaks all the rules of hospitality by trying to embarrass her sister in front of her guest, and by asking her guest to intervene in a family dispute. She even goes so far as to accuse Jesus of not caring. Lord, do you not care? Does it seem to you that we are easily 
excuse me, does it seem to you that we very easily show more hospitality to outsiders than we do to our own family? Hospitality begins at home. Unfortunately, the people we're at least hospitable to can be the people under our very own roofs. If we can be a good host to a total stranger, we can and should be a good host to those we call family. Jesus repeats Martha's name as a gentle rebuke. He notes her distraction rather than her hospitality. Certainly, he welcomes food, but he welcomes discipleship even more. He is on the road to Jerusalem and the cross to pay the ultimate price, and this is his final visit in Luke's gospel to the home of these dear friends. Martha and Mary need Jesus, and Martha's busyness distances her from him. Jesus needs Martha and Mary too. He knows what awaits in Jerusalem, and he, need good, he needs good friends now more than good food. Just like Martha, our worries and distractions prevent us from truly being present with Jesus and can cause us to drive a wedge between ourselves and our Lord and Savior. Our cell phones are indeed a distraction. We have to check our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We find to find out who said what and to who. We find out if we hit the mega millions or the power bill. We are tempted into workplace drama and other things that are unsavory for our mission for Christ. We become easily encumbered with our neighborly duties that we will have missed out on the one thing needed for true hospitality. There is no greater hospitality than listening to your guest. How much more so than the guest is Jesus. So Jesus said that Mary had chosen the better part which will not be taken away from her. The better part that Mary has chosen is sitting at Jesus' feet and listening, being a disciple. There will, there will be enough time for action. First, the disciple must learn from the master. Otherwise, the disciple's busyness may create more problems than it solves. Jesus' words to Martha may also be seen as an invitation rather than a rebuke. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. The one thing needed is for Martha to receive the gracious presence of Jesus, to listen to his words, to know that she is valued not for what she does or how well she does it, but for who she is as a child of God. In a culture of hectic schedules and the relentless pursuit of productivity, we are tempted to measure our worth by how busy we are by how much we accomplish, or by how well we meet the expectation of others. Many people in our congregations likely identify with Martha, feeling pulled in different directions, feeling worried and distracted by many things, and rightfully so. These seem to be common threads of life in our fast-paced world. We worry about our kids going to the right schools, being around the right people, about our job performances, and wondering just when are we going to get that raise? We worry about this pandemic and how it directly and indirectly affects our lives. Worry about that project at work that was supposed to be done hours or weeks ago. We get distracted and we worry about friends and family whom we haven't seen or touched in weeks or months because of this virus that has taken so many lives. We especially worry each day as it gets closer to payday. And that stimulus check. Well, that's already going to build, isn't it? <laughs> and yet, Jesus says in Luke 12, 25, Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? We know that worrying does no good, and that much of what we worry about is not as important in the larger scheme of things. And yet, we cannot seem to overcome our own anxious thoughts at times. It is true that much of our busyness and distraction stems from the noblest of, of intentions. We want to provide for our families. We want to give our children every opportunity to enrich their lives. We want to serve our neighbors and communities and say, and yes, we want to serve the Lord. Indeed, where would the church be without its Martha's? Those faithful folk who perform the task of hospitality 
and served so vitally to make the church a welcoming and well-functioning community. And yet, if all our activities leave us with no time to be still in the Lord's presence and hear his word, we are likely to end up anxious and troubled. We are likely to end up with a kind of service that is devoid of love and joy and is resentful of others. When was the last time we actually sat down and listened to God? When was the last time we actually sat still and just say, speak to me, Lord. What is your word for me? How can I help someone today? Through today's hustle and bustle, we rarely seem to have time for ourselves. With taking care of the family, wearing your mask, going to work, helping your community, wearing your mask, taking care of the church, witnessing the others, going to the store, wearing your mask. It can really overwhelm you. But God does command us to listen in Matthew 17, 5. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Martha and Mary actually represent the two parts that are the basis of our Christian lives, and that is listening and doing. Jesus speaks about listening, believing, obeying many times. For example, Matthew 12, 28, 32, Jesus said, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said the first. Even Jesus' opponents recognize that the person who truly listens is the person who acts on what he or she has said. To be asked to do something and to say, sure, I'll go, without having the intention or desire or conviction to act is not to truly listen. <laughs> Jesus said, the son in the story who truly listened and did the will of his father was the one who went and did what his father asked. The same is true for us as followers of Christ. If we say yes to Jesus, but that yes doesn't influence our thoughts, our words, or our actions, then the Lord may fairly ask if we're listening and doing the will of the Father, which is what God wants. And that's something to say, yes, Lord, I will do your work, I will do your will. But our hands don't do anything at all. Along with faith, God requires action. And we must be of our Father's work. Amen? Yes. Ever heard of selective hearing? Children? <clears throat> like when we tell your children to do something, but they end up doing something else or end up somewhere else in the house. <clears throat> <laughs> Be surprised some adults have selected here as well. <laughs> Both listening and doing, receiving God's word and serving others are vital to this Christian life, just as inhaling and exhaling are to breathe. Yet how often do we forget to breathe in deeply? How often do we forget to breathe the Lord deeply? When we need him now, I know I need him. Do you need it? How deeply do you need it? Yes, Lord. It's not just a three-letter word. Yes. Yes means, yes, I will submit to you. Yes, I will submit to your way. Yes, I will go where you tell me to go. Yes, I will serve the people that you tell me to serve. Amen, church. Amen. Trying to serve without being nourished by God's word. It's like expecting good fruit to grow from a tree that's already dead. Amen. Trying, I'll say that again. Yeah. Trying to serve without being nourished by God's word is like expecting good fruit to grow from a tree that is already dead. Amen. Faith without works is dead. Yes. We are faithful people. So let's put our hands to work. Let us work for the good of the Lord. Amen. 
Luke's story is left suspended. We do not know what happened next, whether Mary or Martha were reconciled, whether they were all able to enjoy the meal that Martha had prepared, whether Martha was finally able to sit and give her full attention to Jesus. We do know that Jesus invites us all, who are worried and distracted by the many things of this world, to sit and rest in his presence, to hear his words of grace and truth, to know that we are loved and valued as children of God, and to always seek him. And his word said, seek him first. Seek him. My friends, keep your hearts and minds on him, and he shall direct your path. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, for the church, say amen. amen. amen.